I wanted to talk to you about the field of digital forensics and um, explain where this digital forensics field fits into the scientific community that produces evidence that is presented in court. So digital forensics now defined under the National Institute of Science and Technology a workforce workforce framework that is called cybersecurity. So when we look at the cybersecurity uh, workforce, which is very complex, and you can uh, go to NIST NICE cybersecurity workforce uh, framework to look at each component, and uh, we'll, we'll see that there is a, a component in the digital or in the cybersecurity called investigate. So under Investigate, there is uh, two branches that are digital forensics and the investigation. So um, if I go back and uh, look at or try to find, let's say, information assurance or the security side of it, you'll see that it is very different. It is in a different branch of this framework that is dealing with not the investigation side of it, but on the uh, protection and defense side of it. So when we click on um, protect and defend, computer network defense analyst, incident response, computer network defense infrastructure support, vulnerability assessment and management, sometimes it's also called penetration testing, would be something that someone would call information assurance. But the investigate side, the investigation side of it, is after the fact. So we have digital forensics and the investigation. So digital forensic collects processes, preserves, analyzes, and presents computer-related evidence in support of network vulnerability mitigation and or criminal fraud, counterintelligence, or law enforcement investigations. Very nice definition. So what is digital forensics from an investigative point of view? Investigations are not new. Investigators are taught to look for opportunity, ability, and motivation in suspects. Ability is the function of aptitude and knowledge and skills, while the motivation is the function of desire and commitment. Now the two, the ability and motivation, if opportunity given, can lead into act against either policy, law, regulation, or a combination of these. But this is not new. So a case only emerges if somebody files a complaint. Without a complaint, there is no case. So uh, at this point, we can also say that the best criminals are still out there and never been prosecuted because uh, maybe they are so good that there are, uh, nobody ever find out what they did and there is no complaint against them. But when we're talking about cases, the cases can be either civil or criminal cases. And the cases have many different types of evidence. But mainly there are two separate sectors of evidence, either the physical evidence or the testimonial evidence. Any evidence that is presented in court, unless it's testimonial, the testimonial evidence, uh, somebody just um, either the victim or the uh, witness only has to... Um, prove that they have direct knowledge of the events that occur. But when we're talking about real or physical evidence, we need to have a scientific proof. Now, courts only require a scientific proof, not something that came out of a science field. So non-science fields can provide scientific proof just like we do in digital forensics. Now, in digital forensics, um, there is no such thing as virtual evidence. So what we do in digital forensics, we take this virtual data and then we create physical evidence out of that. 
and physical data. So in many cases, when we find any type of um, evidence, we need to print it out into a report and also print out the actual evidence that we are talking about. Now, in, in the virtual world, the data, the digital data, have many types and states and ways of store that particular data that we need to learn how to retrieve and how to prepare for court. Because this is the evidence that is going to be used in either civil or criminal court in order to disprove or prove the act against a particular policy law or regulation by the uh, suspect. Now, in order to provide the scientific evidence, we need to generate empirical evidence. Empirical evidence that basically evidence that is tested in a lab environment, in a controlled environment, in um, it's following a scientific method. So the scientific method that actually does tests, uh, generates data, and concludes either the inculpatoriness or the exculpatoriness of the data relating to that particular case. Because investigators are looking for uh, inculpatory data, inculpatory data that supports the, the uh, prosecution side of the case that would make the person guilty. And if we're talking about the defense side of it, we're looking for exculpatory data that will provide proof of innocence for that particular suspect. Now, we use the scientific method because the scientific method allows us to be logical in a way that we can be either inductive, we can follow the inductive reasoning in investigations when we are creating this empirical evidence, this empirical data, one test at a time in order to come up to the conclusion, which is either supporting or denying the, um, the evidence relevance in this case. So the deductive reasoning is uh, usually used on the defense side because if somebody is convicted, let's say you're going up on a, on a uh, appeal and you already convicted, the defense side would use deductive reasoning to find the steps, reduce the steps until they find a mistake in the inductive reasoning process that might uh, help the case. Now, in some cases, what I've seen is uh, even investigators are taught to look at deductive reasoning. In that case, what they refer to is if a person has the ability, motivation, and the opportunity, that person most likely going to be guilty. So, um, so they start from the point of view, sometimes some people start from a point of view that uh, this person is guilty, and let's see if the evidence supports it. Instead of looking at the evidence and see what person would that evidence fit to. And um, that might be considered a little flaw there, but um, it happens in the industry. So anyway, that's the basics of uh, digital forensics. Uh, digital forensics supports cases. And they are looking, in digital forensics, we look for inculpatory and exculpatory data using the scientific method in order to you, uh, provide scientific evidence that doesn't necessarily make digital forensics itself a science. But because we're looking at um, ability and motivation, and mostly the ability, the aptitude and knowledge and skills of a person, because we can see that from digital data, from browsing habits and, and um, email or um, internet communication, we can look at the ability of a person. We can uh, sometimes by the, um, analyzing the uh, conversations, we can look at the aptitude, also looking at the, um, the technical skills and the technical knowledge of the person. We can also relate it back to a person. And in that case, digital forensics is very much a behavior science that deals with the behavior, the virtual behavior of this human being as the human was interacting with the computer.
But the main portion of uh, digital forensics is to analyze the data and to make sense out of the data as far as what uh, type of data we're talking about, visible, deleted, or a hidden data, like a, an image of somebody's desktop would be considered a visible data, an image that can be viewed by regular tools can be considered just plain text or a plain um, viewable visible data and um, it's that if that data was downloaded by the user that we can find uh, or the user actually uh, created that image then uh, that would be a user generated data now that gonna be very weak evidence because that's gonna be a hearsay so usually what we would do even with the visible plain text user generated data is that we would look at the visible plain text sometime encrypted or encoded system generated data or application generated data in order to support our hypothesis about the user interaction and that's what makes it science that's what makes it science that we can actually track a user action a human action we can we can track the user's aptitude we can um, we can analyze the user's ability the user's skill as the user was um, navigating the system navigating the network or um, communicating on the network especially if we find um, data that is hidden on the system that shows a lot of um, skills and knowledge from the uh, suspect's point of view and um, that also looks at uh, motivation motivation and the desire the commitment to hide the information um, for some some reason so we can read a lot of information out of digital evidence that we can locate find um, present as a physical or real evidence in court cases But it's a very interesting field and uh, you should take a look at it and um, hopefully this little presentation helps you understand what this field is about and how does this field fit into the um, evidence generation environment that court proceedings require in order to find the real answer to any kind of a litigation. I'll see you next time.